Hello and welcome to Tech of the Month for November and the year is well and truly flying by. James, how's it going? It's not bad. It's good to be back it's nice, in isn't the it? studio, nicely, safely distanced away from you. And we have this new space. It's a work in progress, obviously. It's not going to look as empty as this, but it's going to be good. So I'm going to jump straight into my product this month, if you will indulge Absolutely. me. Because I've brought something very exciting. Um, and now you know all about these, of course. Yeah. And uh, we haven't featured these yet. These are the Zip 303 Firecrest wheels. Um, and these are some of the most popular wheels that the company makes, yeah. I think. The They're... 303 range just kills it. And now there's quite a lot to talk about with these wheels. And there's quite a lot of headline, uh, headline features about them because they have been very significantly updated. Yeah. First of all, whisper it, they're tubeless only. It's uh, tubeless only, it's hookless, yep. so it actually has to be used as a tubeless tire. And going hookless allowed Zip to do a whole lot of new designs with the rim, which they say make the wheel not only better, but also more efficient, more aerodynamic. So the notable one is they've really, really widened um, the internal rim widths. Yeah. Now Zip were a leading party in wide internal rim widths way back when tubeless and wide tires started becoming a thing in the market. And these have gone from 21 millimeter internal widths to an absolutely huge 25 millimeter internal rim widths. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago when mountain bikes were that width in terms of the rims. And we're talking about tires that are three times, four times the size of that. It's absolutely mad. Now, They've been able to do this, and I, I will say it's quite important to note that that has actually had a very minor effect on the external rim widths, which is still 30 mil. So yeah, I think there's like, it's around about a millimeter difference. So yeah, it's, it's not, not very much at all. So this has all been possible by uh, removing the, the hook. Obviously what that's done as well is it's allowed them to basically thin out the walls as well. So it's not just hookless, but they're thinner because you don't need that extra strength for that hook to paint, which makes it wider. It also helps them support a wider tire. Now these require a 28 millimeter tire as standard. This is a 28 mil tire that Zip have provided on the wheels. Um, now that's quite something. And they've done that because of that internal rim width has grown it now has a much flusher interface between the tire and the rim, which we know is more aerodynamic. Yeah, there's less of that light bulb effect. So it's kind of like, it just allows the air to flow much cleaner around that shape. Exactly. So that's a real sleek look to these wheels, which I think actually look really good. They look great with wider tires. Wider tires are becoming more of the norm now. So they are sort of everywhere. Zip have completely redesigned the hubs. These hubs are ZR1DB hubs, DB, which stands for disc brakes. Yeah. Disc brake only wheels, guys. That's another thing <laughs> as well that Zip has kind of gone, rim brakes, don't need them anymore. Whisper it again. Uh, there's gonna be, some people aren't gonna like that. No, however, if you like Zip wheels, they do still do rim brake versions in their other wheels. So just not the 303s now, the whole new range. Very cool new hubs though, which have something like 66 um, engagement points. So good for those people that uh, train very seriously or race, They're particularly like a, a big pickup or a fast pickup time, should I say. Yeah. And it makes them sound cool as well. Makes them sound very cool. In fact, I haven't tried it. No, they're quite noisy wheels. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not gonna even go there with the dad jokes. <laughs> now these are also quite lightweight. So Zip claim that they are 1,355 grams for the set. Yeah, which is amazing when you consider that the old versions, which you loved, were nearly 200 grams heavier. That's how much they've saved over that whole wheel set, which is huge. It's yeah. not like 10 grams difference or 50 grams difference. It's a lot, it, it is really a lot. And they've, they, you know, that, rim redesign has really helped them slice out a whole lot of weight. Uh, these wheels come with their, some, like their dimple technology. The classic zip dimple technology, which the jury is still out as to whether or not it makes a difference. And that's what stands it out from the really, really cool zip 303S, which is 
same rim width, same rim depth, but a heck of a lot cheaper than these wheels. They're also not made in the US, whereas these are made in the US. It is um, 820 pounds for the rear and 780 pounds for the front. 1600 pounds for the pair um, of the wheels that weigh 1,355 grams. There you go. Those are the Zip 303 Firecrest wheels, which are my product this month. So I'm gonna bring it down to earth with an almighty bump with my products, okay? So are you ready for this? Am I? I've brought a mud guard. <laughs> that is very humble. Yes. Okay, so this isn't just any old mud guard, as you can see. It's quite a distinctive, quite unique looking mud guard. Yeah. This is called the Quick Guard, and it's from a company called Quick Guard. So, number one, you can see, well, it's a single sided design. So, it uses a very, very specific way of mounting to your bike, and it's down to your axle. So, what you have is you have a little clamp here that fits onto an adapter that you can then clamp onto your axle, or if you've got disc brakes with through axles, you can get a replacement through axle with the adapter. So if I grab one of those, here we go. So that is obviously a through axle, then it's got this funny little notchy bit here, and that slips in like so, and then you can clamp it up, and then away you go. It's pretty cool. That is quite sleek yeah. for mug guards, and appeals to people like me who are it like inevitably too lazy to go through like the cutting the mud guards down yeah. to the lengths and yeah. um this is all ready built is there any adjustment in it at all well that's where yeah you let me just tighten this up a second on here so it's a single four mil allen key to actually tighten it up so you can obviously adjust the the position of it to get it right on top of your wheel then you have what quick guard called their gimbal mounting system so as you can see there's some washers on the tops of these bits here that can adjust the angle of the guard. So you can set it out exactly above your wheel and above your tire. And then you've got some spaces here. So you want to set it up about 10 mil away from your tire. So it's designed to run with tires up to a 32 millimeter tire. And it's rock solid. That's the other good thing about it because it's an aluminum frame on here. It's rock solid. Uh, this is decent, like sort of thermoplastic. It's got a couple of reflective bits on it, and it's just really cool. And I quite like it, especially this time of year. I'm going to be fitting these. Yeah, I like it a lot. It's actually captured my imagination of what yes. a, a take on a mug guard, which I didn't think there was many more avenues to go down in the design. So I quite, I quite like it. Um, yeah. James, tell me, how much yes. does it cost? So that is the one thing. I'm glad you're sitting down here. So these cost from $44.99 each. Yes, so you can basically get these with a variety of different axle options. So we've actually been sent all of the different axles. So you've got everything from standard quick release front and rear, uh, standard bolt through, so 12 by 100 and 12 by 142. Then you've got boost, so the 148. You've then got the specialized ones, which have a different thread pitch. So it covers pretty much all options. And like you can leave the axle in the bike, take these off so you don't have to run them. But then when you want really to put them on, you just literally just put them on and clamp it on. Well, thanks, James. Now we're going to go to Michelle, who has filmed her bit previously. Let's see what she's got. So my product for November's Tech of the Month is very much winter themed or indeed indoor cycling themed. I brought along with me uh, No Pins Sub-Zero Shorts and also the lightweight Eco Jersey. Uh, they're designed to be worn together. Um, the Sub-Zero collection uh, has a very special party trick in that each item has a pocket or a couple of pockets uh, in which you can embed uh, freeze packs. Um, I think this is the first time that a cycling brand has created kit specifically for this purpose. You do see pro riders having various ice packs and so on um, down the back of their skin suits when they're warming up for time trials. I think people for UK time trials have also done it during events when, um, when there has been very, very hot conditions. It's not something I've seen designed specifically for indoor cycling. So no pins has certainly been first to the party there. So how does it work? 
Uh, these are the shorts and you'll see there is a pocket in the top here and there is a pocket at the lower back as well. And it comes alongside this lovely little pack with assorted gel packs. And you simply pop them in here. And then you have a second one which just pops into the lower back here. Um, it's certainly different. Uh, it's an interesting concept. There's also, um, I mean, the jersey is the super light eco jersey from No Pins. It is its standard, it already existed within the collection. Um, it is designed from 80% recycled fabric, hence the eco name, which is um, a really, you know, real credit to No Pins. It doesn't have any specific ice pack pockets. If you wanted um, a top and bottom with the ice packs, there is a tri suit, um, which comes in at 189.99. In addition, if you are still too sweaty, there are uh, armbands. There you go, you've got that armband and there is the ice pack tucked away in there to keep you cool. Um, now, you, it does suggest that you replace these after 20 to 40 minutes of riding and the ones that go, the larger ones that go into these pockets is 40 to 60 minutes of riding. So it really is targeted very much at some pretty serious indoor racing. Uh, so the Sub-Zero shorts come in at $139.99. The Eco jersey, which is not a Sub-Zero item, um, but this comes in at $79.99. The packs, you can buy additional packs. They, come, they start at $4.99, go up to about $8.99. Um, and also the armbands are $29.99 for a pair. There are cheaper alternatives out there. So DHB have some indoor specific clothing. Their shorts are much more focused around the chamois being really, really thick and um, particularly kind of protective if you are spending a lot of time sitting very much in the saddle. So it'd be interesting to test all this kit out. Um, not something that I've ever tried before. It's always good to try something new. Um, so we'll see how we get on. Now, we move on to Bike of the Month, which James has brought along this month. So, James, tell me about this beauty that we have behind us. Yes. So this is the Bowman Palace 3. So it's a brand new bike from the British company Bowman. Now, they do things slightly differently. So they specialize in aluminium. So the Palace is kind of like the all-round bike. Now, it's named after Crystal Palace which is where Neil, the, uh, the, the founder of uh, Bowman, cut his teeth racing. And basically, this isn't a race bike, but it's designed to handle like a race bike. So it's all about making it handle properly. So it's just really, really solid, decent geometry on here. And it's made of 6069 T6 aluminium. So it's a really, really hard wearing, strong aluminium. But a few features of the frame. So first of all, uh, it's got a slightly slimmed down head tube from the norm. So we've got a standard inch and eighth on top, but an inch and three eighths at the bottom rather than the standard inch and a half, which makes it lighter. Obviously it's through axle. Yes, this is a disc brake bike, as you can see on here, but it takes all normal parts. There was the one thing that Bowman are really, really sort of like hot on is making sure that the bike isn't just cool to buy, but it's cool to live with. So all of the bearings, all the headset bearings are standard bearings, threaded bottom bracket, 27.2 seat post. The cable routing is internal because, hey, who doesn't like internal cable routing? Seat stays are flattened as well. So there's a, a lot more comfort in this than you would expect from a standard aluminum bike. Full Altegra build. So there's no compromise on this. It's an Altegra cassette. Everything is Altegra on here. We've got Hand-built wheels. Now this is unusual. We don't tend to see brands trying to spec hand-built wheels, but these are all hand-built in the UK. Aluminium rims, um, slightly wider, but the one thing that they've done, or Bowman has done, is really, really important, is they've spec'd the best tires they can. That so, is key. When you're buying a bike, yeah. good tires, yeah. absolutely fundamental. One area that a lot of brands kind of like cut corners on, um, but these, these are, Continental GP5000. So these are some of our favorite tires and they transform your bike. Seriously, if you haven't tried them, try them. So they make this bike ride incredibly well. 
The rest of the kit is all name stuff as well. So it's data finishing kit and fabric, bar tape and saddles as well. So it's, it's all spot on stuff on there. And then the best thing is the price. Go on. So British brands, this is all custom spec. So you can basically order it. It's pre-ordered and hand-built for you. Uh, 2,495 pounds for the full bike. That's pretty good yeah. for an Altegra equipped, essentially from a very small company. Yeah. Nice yeah. bespoke build. It's really, if you look at most of the big brands and look at an aluminium frame bike with Altegra or even like a, you know, an equivalent carbon bike um, with like a lower spec, this is actually really good value. Yeah. And that's the key thing that we always say is, you know, don't write aluminium off just because you might commonly commonly associate it with um, entry level bikes or sort of yeah. you know cycle to work scheme price point of bikes um, don't write it off because there are some brilliant aluminium bikes available so out of interest how much does this weigh that's the other cool thing about it so we're looking at 8.13 kilos which is actually pretty good for an aluminium bike with handbuilt wheels and when you compare it to some of the other bikes I've tested recently, for example, the Amond, the Trek Amonda SL6 Pro, which is a carbon climbing bike, weighs almost exactly the same. That's mad, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's like about, what is it? Like, it's 100 grams difference mm. between the two. And that's, that's pretty good. And it's designed to, you know, you can race it. It's, they say it's not just a race bike, but you can race it, you can ride it, you can have it as all, all rounder. Is it mud god mounts in the back? So dare I say, you can use normal mud guts. So yeah, it's a great all-rounder. And it's why I've chosen it as bike of the month this month. Great, well, thanks James for bringing along that beautiful aluminum bike. We don't see many aluminum bikes anymore. So that is actually very refreshing and good for the soul. That is everything though for Tech of the Month for November. We'll be back next month for December, the Christmas edition. The Christmas special. The Christmas special. And uh, we'll be bringing loads of more great tech for you to take a look at. But in the meantime, be sure to check out the channel where we've got loads of other tech videos that you can take a look at. And be sure to give us a thumbs up and to subscribe as well. Now, any questions you might have, leave them in the comment section below and we'll do our best to answer them. And we'll be back soon. We'll see you then. Welcome to Tech of the Month for November. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just staring like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>